Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for February 2021. After the housing market finished last year with strong foundations, housing values continue to rise through the first month of the year, with CoreLogic's National Home Value Index up 9 tenths of a percent over the month. The January movement takes Australian home values to a fresh record high, surpassing pre-COVID levels by 1%, and nationally home values are 0.7% higher than the previous peak back in September 2017. Every capital city and broad rest of state region recorded a rise in housing values over the month, ranging from a 2.3% surge across Darwin to a relatively mild 0.4% rise in Sydney and Melbourne. Continuing a trend that became evident early in the pandemic, regional housing values rose at more than twice the pace of the capital city markets. CoreLogic's combined regionals index was up 1.6% over the month, while capital city values were 0.7% higher. Since the onset of COVID-19 in March last year, regional housing values have surged by 6.5%, while capital city housing values are down by 0.2% over the same time frame. The largest states are seeing regional home values rising at more than three times the pace of their capital city counterparts. Home values across regional Victoria and regional New South Wales rose by 1.6% and 1.5% respectively in January, compared with a 0.4% increase in home values across Sydney and Melbourne. Internal migration data shows more people are leaving Sydney and Melbourne for regional areas, resulting in a pivot of activity from the metro regions to the outer fringe and the regional markets. This demographic trend is further compounded by the demand shock of stalled overseas migration. As Melbourne and Sydney historically receive around 75% of overseas migration to the capital cities, these metro areas in particular have been hardest hit by the restrictions to overseas travel. Better housing affordability and an opportunity for lifestyle upgrades or lower density housing options are other factors that might be contributing to this trend, along with the newfound popularity of remote working arrangements. Another broad trend that's becoming increasingly evident is the outperformance of houses over units. At a national level, house values have risen by 3.5% over the past six months, while unit values are unchanged. More recently, the past three months has seen every capital city record a stronger result for houses over units. Demand for units has diminished through COVID-19 due to record low levels of investor participation and changing living preferences. At the same time, supply levels are heightened among some precincts. While demand and supply remains imbalanced, we're likely to see units continue to underperform relative to detached housing markets. The rise in housing values is occurring against a backdrop of low advertised supply and rising buyer activity. Inventory levels started 2021 in a very tight position. The number of fresh listings added to the market nationally in January was 2.4% lower than the same period a year ago and 12.9% below the five-year average. Although fresh stock being added to the marketplace is close to the same levels a year ago, total advertised inventory started the year around record lows. Nationally, total listing numbers, which include new listings plus relisted properties, were 26.4% lower than this time last year and tracking 28.3% below the five-year average. Melbourne was the only city to record total listing numbers that were higher than last year, up 11.9%. Another factor impacting available housing supply has been a strong rate of absorption from rising home buyer activity, especially in the detached housing space. CoreLogic estimates the number of national home sales over the past three months was 23.9% higher than the equivalent three month period from a year ago. The volume of regional home sales was estimated to be 26.8% higher than a year ago, while capital city sales were up 22.1%. On the latest estimates, the volume of capital city house sales were 11.8% above the decade average over the past six months, while the volume of capital city unit sales was rising but remained 8.1% below the decade average. With housing activity continuing to rise at above average levels, while listing numbers remain well below average, the natural consequence is upwards pressure on housing prices. Adelaide's housing market has been extremely resilient to any downwards pressure on housing values. Apart from a 0.1% dip in home values last June, the market's been consistently rising to new record highs each month. The past six months has seen house values rising at almost double the pace of units, up 5.8% compared with a 3.2% lift in unit values. 
Home sales in the three months to January are tracking almost 23% higher than a year ago, while total listing numbers are down 35% on last year. Such low supply is creating some urgency amongst buyers and empowering sellers, which can be seen in very fast selling times. Adelaide homes are averaging 37 days to sell compared with 43 days a year ago. Looking across Adelaide subregions, it's the northern and the southern suburbs which are driving the strongest growth rates, with home values across Adelaide's north up 3.9% over the past three months, while the south is up 3.6%. Overall, the January results from CoreLogic showed the housing market has started the year on a very firm footing, setting the scene for further price rises throughout the year. Many of the housing market headwinds have dissipated as the Australian economic recovery consistently outperforms forecasts. Labour markets are continuing to improve even though JobKeeper is winding down. Mortgage repayment deferrals have reduced to just 2.4% of all mortgages, down from 11% in May last year, and buyer activity is well above average, even though overseas migration has virtually stopped. Low interest rates have been a key factor supporting the housing market's recovery. Mortgage rates are likely to remain at record lows for the foreseeable future, with little chance interest rates could rise this year. This is because inflation and unemployment are still a long way from reaching the RBA's objectives of full employment and returning the annual inflation rate to the target range of between 2 and 3 per cent. New headwinds for the housing market could be seen in the form of tighter lending policies. However, a trigger for another round of macro prudential intervention doesn't seem to be apparent at the moment. A rise in lending activity regarded as riskier, such as higher proportions of interest-only lending, loans with high debt or loan value to income ratios, and loans to borrowers with small deposits could be the catalyst for a tightening in credit rules. The most significant risk to housing markets remains further outbreaks of the virus. The recent series of outbreaks and subsequent border closures and restrictions through late December and January had an immediate negative impact on consumer sentiment. As we know from the Melbourne example, a sustained period of restrictions focused on containing the virus would likely see economic activity, including home buying and selling, temporarily stall. This could result in renewed downwards pressure on housing prices. Looking forward, we are expecting housing values to continue trending higher. However, the performance will depend on the course of the virus amidst vaccination programs, as well as evolving economic and demographic trends. You can keep up to date with all the twists and turns in the housing market via CoreLogic's research pages at www.corelogic.com.au.